So actually, because this little spreadsheet is recorded, the URL. Like that's why I also wanted to make that the Zoom links private. Um, okay, so welcome today. So I want to tell you a bit about um, storing data um, or RNA seq data in Bioconductor um, with a summarized experiment and single cell experiment. Um, these two packages, we use them a ton. Um, so it's basically one of the first packages we ask new people to try to learn. Um, um, because uh, we'll, we'll use it for you know, basically every type of analysis that we do, even the like, DNA methylation ones, uh, which are not you know, RNA-seq. Um, so I put a link here to this um, Google Doc that has uh, the things that we'll work on today. Um, this is the first Google Doc that could use some actual real code to run. Um, and so at some point you might want to copy paste it into your own R. Um, uh, and so in the meantime, before we get to actually running code, if you haven't installed um, uh, these three packages, summarize experiment, R track layer, and single cell experiment, uh, please run these lines of code. Um, if you wanna install the optional packages, you will need R 4.0. Uh, which was released, I think, like about two weeks ago, in order for this line to run, the special LIBD, because um, this one is only available for R4.0. Um, um, but like these three packages, they're not you know um, necessary for um, uh, for everyone. I'm just gonna uh, show examples with them in a little bit. So. Um, the first link I have here is if you go to, well, I guess I should have started from, um, um, if you go to bioconductor.org, uh, the website, um, on the right side, let me increase the size of this. Um, on the right side, under the learn uh, box, there's a common workflows link. That's the first link I sent on that rules um, spreadsheet. And among them, there's 27 of them. Um, the first one is called RNA Seq Gene by Mike Love, um, um, who's an um, associate, I think now, a uh, professor at um, uh, University of North Carolina. Um, and so um, if you click on that link, so that, that would be the same as the second bullet link over here. Um, we can see the landing by the bioconductor landing uh, page for the workflow called RNA seq gene. If we scroll down under documentation, we'll find that there's an HTML file. That's the one I really wanted to open. Um, and so, <clears throat> this is a workflow that Mike Love first made for like explaining how to do RNA seq differential expression, um, and then he has actually been updating it uh, through the years. Um, for example, now it mentions how to quantify data with Salmon, for example, how to read the data. In. But um, we're not gonna go through all of this. What I really wanted to show is this image here on section 2.5, summarized experiment. Uh, <clears throat> and I wanted to show this because this is a, the, the simplest of all the images that explains what summarized experiment really is. Um, Ultimately, what Summarized Experiment provides is an interface to keep three type of tables together. Um, and one table is the row ranges. This will contain information about your uh, gene coordinates. Um, that's a blue table over here on the left. It has one row per gene. And then you can have multiple colors per gene. You could have like chromosome, start, and strand gene ID, for example. Then the pink table over here is the, inform is the table that has the counts. So the number of reads that align each gene, for example. And this will have also one row per gene, but then it's gonna have one column per uh, sample in your project. Um, and then tied to it is this green table called call data. It has one row now per sample. So you can see how they match the green part, like the, the the 
the number of rows of the green part matches the number of columns of the pink part. So they, um, in this uh, figure, the, the header, the first line of the table is shown in, in, uh, in a darker color. So you can see the green table is a little bit rotated, um, uh, but it, it is made, it's designed to be um, matching the pink table. Um, and then, uh, so you have one row per sample here on this call, call data slot. Um, and then you have one column per covariate that you have for your samples. So one column could be sex, another one could be age, uh, another one could be case control status, things like that, or it could be like quality metrics. So that's really what this package provides, a summarized experiment. Um, but like, um, uh, provides a way of keeping, you know, three tables together. It's almost like a small database. And then once you have an object of this type, you can then say like, oh, actually, I only want to, let's say, the first half of the genes. So if you say like, I only want the first half of the genes, it will automatically subset the pink table to just keep the first half of the pink table. Let's say on, on the green table, you're like, oh, I only wanted the second half of the samples, right? Maybe those are my controls, for example. And then that would automatically uh, subset and, uh, and just keep the first half of the pink table. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the second half of the pink table. That was it. Um, all right. So that's um, like a big overview of summarized experiment. Um, but next, you know, the, like it's such an important package that has been explained multiple times. So there's actually a paper, a recent paper, well, 2015, um, a highly accessed paper that uh, this is a, one of the two bicon biconductor papers that are out there. Um, and so this one over here explains many things you can do with biconductor, but then it also explains, um, uh, it also includes um, another figure explaining summarized experiments. So I'm just gonna like, um, you know, show you all the different figures that explain this um, type of data because uh, they can all be useful. Um, it's useful to see this information repeated multiple times. So this is a, a little bit of a, a more complex figure um, because now it's showing you, again, your table uh, with information about the genes on the left side. On the center, you have your table of information about the samples, sorry, the count, sorry. And then you have another one that has the samples. You can see here, they're showing it before you rotate it, right? But the, the number of rows of, in our table, in our phenotype table for the samples, has to match the number of columns um, in our count um, table. Uh, so that's the green part over here. Um, uh, then the rows in purple here from the genes, they have to match also the rows in purple for the count matrix. Now you'll notice this is a bit more complicated of an image because it shows multiple boxes here in the center. And a summarized experiment uh, um, allows you to have multiple matrices of counts. So you can imagine having the raw counts, you can, uh, then that could be one matrix. Another matrix could be the um, RPKM matrix, which is a, like a normalized counts matrix, um, and like um, another things um, you can have there. It also shows this external piece which we generally don't use as much, which is you can have even more information about the experiment. So I see a raised hand. Hey, yeah. How big do these um, variables get, like memory-wise, and like do they take forever to load, or do they have some type of special uh, algorithm where they do like parallel processing, loading on multiple nodes? All right, so, um, so your data can get big in many different ways, right? One way that it can get big is that you can have a lot of rows. So for example, in our case, we sometimes work with, um, with the exons or exon exon junctions, and those could be tables that instead of having, let's say, between 25,000 and 50,000 rows, you end up having around 300 to 400,000 rows. So that makes you know, um, the data big in one dimension over here. 
You can also have the data big in the number of samples. So this is the case when you work with um, single cell uh, data, where you have like, let's say 40,000 cells or, um, or things like that. So that can get big on that side. Um, yeah, now, that wasn't really my, sorry. I don't think I phrased that question right. How well do they load? Because say you have a bunch of like, I've once had 600,000 rows in a data frame. And if you look yeah. that regular so I was, I was getting file to that. that takes, oh, okay. I was getting to that because you either increase this teal dimension or the green dimension. When you increase either of them, you are actually increasing the size of the middle, right, of the counts. That's the part that takes the longest to load because it's the, it's the biggest table. And so uh, summarize experiment can be uh, extended by handling different types of uh, matrices. So there's actually matrices that are, let's say you're working with a single cell data that is very sparse, that has a lot of zeros. And so there's ways in R of storing that type of large matrix in a memory efficient way. There's also ways of storing it in disk, so you don't actually never load it in memory. And so this, um, whatever backend you use for storing the data, uh, summarize experiment uh, most likely uh, supports it. And so you can have really, really big data. So for example, some people have worked with a million cells, right? So that's a million of these green columns. Um, um, and they, they can load them in their laptops type of thing you know, fairly fast because it's, it's just um, using a, a disk representation of the data. Um, so it really depends on how you actually code this part. And that is up to the user, right? How you made the middle part. Um, Okay. Um, but like by default, the, the, the tools that they provide work fairly well for like um, the data we have. Um, it just, it doesn't take really long to load. Um, okay. Um, so let's look at uh, um, the landing page for summarize experiment. Um, I put on the uh, on the Google Doc the long link, but remember you can always type https slash 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 packages and then the name of the package. And that will like redirect you to the to the landing page. Um, so summarize experiment. Um, you can, if we scroll further down to the details section, you can see the list of packages that like depend on it, use it by importing it or actually suggest it. This is a really long list because this is such a important package in Biconductor uh, for storing data. And so there's actually under the documentation tab, there's actually two links that explain more about it. Uh, for some of the questions that, that Keenan just asked, um, you will need it to look into the extended, the more advanced vignette. Um, but let's go to the beginners, the, the introduction vignette, which is this first one over here. Um, so <clears throat> um, this vignette has another illustration about what a summarized experiment is. So, this one is also a, a nice because it, you can see here, they show an example of where you subset one row of the phenotype column in orange. And this row in orange corresponds to one column of the middle section of the counts. One uh, row over here in purple corresponds also to one row of the middle section, right? Um, um, so, this that's you know the structure of uh, of a summarized experiment now the thing is uh summarized experiment the package actually builds up upon also um, other infrastructure biconductor packages you'll notice here that on the left we are saying that we have um, um information about the ranges of the genes right or features um expression features um so since this is like a, an introductory um, um, session, 
we need to actually understand what that is. So that involves a second package called genomic ranges. Um, so we can just open that link over here. Um, genomic ranges. So genomic ranges actually has a paper associated with it. It's a uh, 2013 plus paper uh, that explains um, the idea of this package. And so um, the idea of it briefly is we're working with genomics. And so we tend to have information that is um, that matches the specific coordinates of the genome. So like this is an illustration where we have, let's say, a gene that has three isoforms. Um, each isoform has uh, several accents uh, denoted by the little boxes. And there's a direction of where the uh, transcription is going from, in this case, from right to left. Um, and so we might measure information for this little box over here, this one over here, and this one over there, right? Uh, so that, you know, that you know, information that we can measure could be the counts, for example. Um, but we need to know exactly what part of the genome it corresponds to, uh, what strand of the genome it, it belongs to, um, and things like that. And so that's where this genomic ranges um, package uh, really, uh, you know, is really useful. And he's been in Bioconductor for 10 years now. Um, so I actually remember uh, hearing about it, about, about it the first time. I was like, ooh, this is really cool. Um, so before you had to do a lot of things uh, 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 manually, and it was a lot harder. Um, one of the vignettes the, under the documentation, sorry, the first vignette HTML is for an introduction to the genomics ranges package. So um, this one over here, we can see a, a quick example of what it is. So there's a function called G ranges inside the genomic ranges package where you have to give it a set of chromosomes, um, a set of star positions and positions. You can also give it a strand information and optional information, let's say score or GC. And this looks almost like a table. It, like once you provide, once you make it, it says like, oh, we have information here for 10 genomic coordinates. We have two columns of extra information for those coordinates, like a score and GC column. Here we under uh, seek names for sequence names. We see like what chromosome it is. Um, then we see like, oh, this one is uh, what coordinates of the genome it is. So that's the ranges part is from a, 101 to, to uh, 111 what strand it is, plus, minus, um, asterisk means both, for example. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of things this package can do, and I'm not gonna uh, go over all of them right now, but this is one of the cornerstone packages in Bioconductor as well. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, that's how you actually store the data in, in R and bio, uh, using Bioconductor tools for genomic coordinates. But like, uh, there's a lot of data out there, right? Um, a lot of bioinformaticians have pro uh, created uh, genome uh, coordinate information um, and saved it in many different ways. Um, um, two of them are the BED file format and the GTF file format. Um, uh, the bed file, I, th I think, was um, created, or, uh, or at least it's heavily linked to the UCSC genome browser. Um, this is another file format that has like chromosome, start and uh, strand information and other things. Right? Um, um, the GTF file format is one that's used for annotation. And so there's a companion package to genomic ranges um, that is equally important called uh, R track layer. Um, um, so our track layer, this provides an interface to annotation files and also the, the genome browser. Um, um, so that's why I asked you to install this package uh, because we're gonna use some information, uh, some tools from our track layer in our example. We don't actually care right now about how it actually imports the data. 
but we only want to we only care that it can read many different file formats so G, gff bed bed graph and, and you know um, many many file formats after that um, so this is where i want you to write some code um, i mean um, or uh, run some code uh, so um, hopefully by now you've finished installing some of these tools so um, on my R Studio window that I preloaded, because if I'm using Zoom, it takes a long time to load. Um, I copy pasted this. So um, uh, just uh, you know, walk with me. Uh, don't don't rush ahead because I'm I'm gonna uh, have you do some little exercises too. Uh, so the first one I have here is uh, in my code lines. Uh, I'm first going to load uh, the um, R track layer package. Um, um, this prints a lot of stuff because uh, uh, it uses many other bioconductor tools and they're all uh, required to run. Um, uh, once it finishes loading the R package, then we can actually use it. Um, and uh, one of the functions that R track layer has is called import. Import allows you to read data from many different file formats um, and convert them into R or biconductor file uh, formats uh, or objects. So here I'm giving you an, a, URL, an, a URL to a particular uh, GTF file that I want to read. Um, this was created by someone else. In this case, it was uh, Chris Wilkes uh, from Hopkins Computer Science. Um, what it actually is doesn't really matter for the purpose of this exercise. I just chose it because it's small. It's like less than two megabytes. Um, um, and it will help us uh, learn more about genomic ranges. So uh, you'll notice that uh, our track layer import was able to read data from the web, um, 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 which is pretty nice. Once we loaded it, it created an object of the type G ranges. So, so that's the object that genomic ranges provides. Um, and so this, you know, it's a fairly, uh, uh, you know, massive one because it has 63,000 rows. So there's information here. This is actually one for genes on the, uh, for the human genome on their gen code version 26. So there's actually 63,000 genes that we know of in this particular data set. Um, and then we also have information about these genes. So we have the source, what type it is, um, score here, what phase, uh, the gene ID, the gene type, so protein coding, um, et cetera, the gene name, which is the symbol, um, um, and then some information here about Havana, which I'm, you know, I'm not uh, super familiar with. Um, but uh, with this, we are going to be able to check some things. So one function from genomic ranges is called find overlaps. And this is, uh, this is a really powerful function because you can uh, search uh, whether like a set of coordinates that you're interested in overlap um, the file you have. So like, you know, for, in order to run this, we need to have like a query um, region. And so I'm here actually going to use uh, G ranges again from the genomics range, range, genomic ranges package. And you'll notice that I'm actually providing uh, a string syntax that um, some of you might, might, might be familiar with. This is a string syntax that the UCSC genome browser uses, which is the name of the chromosome, colon, the start position, uh, uh, the start position, which in my case here, I chose uh, 10 million. Um, then a dash symbol, then the end position of your coordinate, which in this case is 10,200,000. Uh, colon, and then the strand symbol, which can be plus or minus. Um, so if I run this, lines 13 and 14 of my code, um, we get a little uh, uh, small G ranges object, very simple, only has one range, has no metadata columns, um, and it says here, like, oh, we're working with a uh, chromosome 21 from um, 
um, position uh, uh, 10 million to position 10 million 200,000 uh, on the strand, on the positive strand. Um, so now that let's say, you know, we actually what, have what, a qu question. I mean, what if you don't add the strand? Are you going to then query both strands or does yeah. it matter? Or are you going to get an error? Yes, yeah, so if you don't have a strand, um, uh, I'll just make that. If I don't provide a strand, it assumes that you're talking about both strands. That's why it puts the asterisk symbol there. Um, so now that I have a little uh, region that I'm interested in, I can then use the find overlaps function from genomics ranges to, um, to, to ask if my query re region overlaps any genes. Right? Uh, that's really what I'm asking here. And we can see here that uh, my query input one, which I only have one, overlaps genes uh, 40,078 and 40,079. Uh, but this was actually strand aware. So this is, that means that my query region that is on the positive strand is overlapping genes also on the positive strand. Find overlaps has an argument called ignore strand, which by default is set to false. But here I'm going to change it to true, and we'll notice now that my little uh, query region now overlaps four more, uh, two more genes, so four in total, um, across both strands. Um, and uh, uh, from this type of result, which is a hits object, you can extract, for example, the uh, the subject hits. This is the regions, the genes that it matched to. Um, that's what I'm doing over here in line 23. So that's extracting just this, uh, you know, 40,076, 77, 78, 79 entries. Um, and this is a regular um, integer vector in R, which, is, which I can then use to subset my genes uh, genomic ranges object. So that's, um, I'm subsetting it by just this one single square bracket. Um, so uh, here in lines 20, 20 to 26, I'm showing how to actually build the query for line 26. So, because like, sure, it's great to know the four IDs of the genes, but like, um, that doesn't really help you understand what they are. And so here we can see that these four genes overlap bases uh, 10 million to 10 million 200,000 uh, in chromosome 21 uh, across both uh, strands, negative and positive. Uh, um, so that's, you know, this is like just an, a taste of what genomic ranges can do. Um, another function that, that is similar is called count overlaps. Um, so count overlaps, um, you can run it with like a single object and it will uh, uh, find the overlaps to itself. So for example, we can see globally um, how many genes each gene overlaps um, each other in um, uh, gene code version 26. Um, and this is a pretty complex uh, or organism. At some point, there's a gene that overlaps 95 genes. That's quite a bit of a, um, a hard region of the genome to work with, let's say. Uh, this is actually, uh, uh, this is strand aware overlap. We can use the, the ignore the strand. And then now we see that the maximum is actually 100. Uh, uh, and then the median went from one gene overlapping a single gene to then uh, each gene overlapping a million of two genes across both strands. I see a raised hand by Joao. Hello? Uh, you're muted, Joanna. Yeah, I wrote the question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh you wrote a question? Oh, I'm not seeing the chat. Um... So can we add uh to the gene gene code subject hit, subject hit file, a column indicating the overlapping way. Um, so what pieces of it overlaps? Sorry? You wanna find what parts, uh, what parts of it it overlaps? Yes, so in case I have uh, like a query with a different, uh, ge different uh, genomic region. Yeah. I'm interested to see in the genes file, 
which yeah, so overlap which, I say. What overlap? What overlap yeah. what, yes. Is it possible to obtain a file with this information? Yeah, so I'm actually going to save that um, output um, into an object because this involves multiple steps. Um, so you need, you, need, you need to combine your query uh, with the genes you find. Uh, you can then uh, use the disjoint function, which finds all the different pieces, and then um, um, then um, then you can ask which of those pieces overlap your first your initial query. Let's say okay. so. Um, we want. the hits from um, our query back to the pieces. And so we can get actually the, the core, you know, the, the specific windows that they actually overlap. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, so. But in case, for example, I have a file with uh, uh, 25 uh, genomic region, and each genomic region has a sort of uh, uh, yes, 25 different genomic region, also more. And they want to see exactly which genes overlap uh, all these 25 region in one output. Is this possible or no? Or I can, or I can just do it for each region at a time. Uh, you can do many things with gen genomic ranges. Um, um, I didn't fully follow your example but like yeah um, okay. but it's it, you know it's definitely possible to code many things with genomic ranges um, and so i think i think your solution your your scenario is doable uh, okay. we would just need to actually have like some data to work through the example okay um, yeah. um but yeah um okay so this code actually didn't fully work um, framework strength. Um, um, oh, so I was just showing, yeah, like you can find how many of them overlap if you ignore the strand. Another thing you can, uh, that these functions have is a mean overlap. So you can ask for a minimum overlap of 100 base pairs. So that brings down that number from 100 maximum to 34. The median is still two. Uh, like, uh, you can here do a little distribution of it and like actually um, 3000 genes are shorter than 100 base pairs because they don't overlap anything <laughs> once you ask for 100 base pair overlap um, they're too short um, so that's the the you know what some of the operations you can do with the gene coordinates on the g ranges but uh what i actually wanted to do is um uh, i'm going to skip your question for now um uh, just because of time a little bit um, what I want to move now is away a bit from genomic ranges and then into summarized experiments. Um, so um, if we load the summarized experiment package uh, and then check the help file for the summarized experiment function, um, um, there's a lot of information here, but like I'm scrolling all the way down to the examples. And this is what the code that I gave you uh, involves. Um, so it's that example here. So we're gonna create a, an example summarized experiment that has 200 rows, six columns. It's gonna have some random count data. Uh, we're gonna have um, you know, some predefined row ranges information, so like, it's gonna be across the 200 regions of the, of the genome that we're interested in um, with some information about the IP for them. Um, we're gonna have some information about uh, samples themselves, like the phenotype data. And once we have that, we can uh, put all three pieces together, the counts, the phenotype data, and the uh, feature information together in a summarized experiment object. Um, and so this RSC object over here, um, if you print it, it says like, oh, we're talking about a range summarized experiment object. 
it has dimensions 200 by 6, so 200 genes, 6 samples. Um, the middle table only has one. Um, um, over here in the middle, there's only one table called counts. That's over here, the assays. Uh, then the six samples are called A, B, etc., up until F. And we only have one um, metadata column called treatment. Um, so that's all joined together. Uh, you can actually then start extracting some of the information. So for example, the function dim from base R will extract the, current, the correct dimensions for it. Um, the names, the dimension names also, like we can extract the, the names for the genes. There's actually, we didn't provide actually any names for the genes, but then we also have the names for our six samples. Um, we can also access um, the count matrix. So this is our matrix of 200 rows by six columns with the random count numbers. And we can access that information and see you know, that if uh, the counts there um, with um, assay. With the function row ranges, we can extract the G ranges information for our summarized experiment object that we can then work with um, if we want to. With the call data uh, column uh, function, sorry, we can extract the phenotype information over here. So that's why in this image, you can see some of these examples, so row data, assays, whole data. All these are functions from the summarized experiment package for accessing the data in different ways. Um, cool. So um, I'm going to uh, divide you in uh, groups. Um, and um, I'm going to divide you in groups small enough that it's like two of you per group. Um, and I, um, what I want you is to just um, 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 explain to each other what these lines of code are doing. So, uh, so I want that, uh, and then also. So I want you to explain to each other what these two lines of code that, and so let me uh, make the breakout rooms. Um, and so um, we'll spend five minutes there and then I'll, we'll come back to the main room. Um, the breakout rooms don't get recorded by the way, uh, unless I'm in the room. I think everyone's back. I think so. Cool. Uh, so I hope you like this breakout room. I think it just takes a bit time, a bit of time, and I'm looking at the clock. We're short, of, short on time, so I had to cut it a bit short. Um, but I think most of you got to the point where you um, either uh, were able to to run the code or saw the code output here. And so I just want to explain uh, what I, uh, what is uh, trying to get you to look to see. Um, uh, although I didn't like fully explain. Um, the syntax, but um, so we have our race summarized experiment object here, and then the first one we're using uh, the square brackets with a comma, and we have two numbers before the comma. If you do that, and you can compare it to the output from before, um, 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 you compare this to the output from before. Um, uh, before the dimensions were like 200 by six, now our dimensions are two by six. So something actually happened on the, um, on the, on the rows of this uh, object. And the rows uh, here for a summarized experiment are, uh, represent the uh, genes. So we actually subsetted our data to just the first two genes because that's the numbers here, one and two. Uh, the next one, also has square brackets and a comma, 
but we're uh, this, the things that we're providing are to the right side of the comma. So these are columns. Um, if we look at what it printed, it says like, oh, we have an object with dimensions 200 by three. So it still has the 200 genes, but now only has three columns. The call names for these three columns are A, B, and F, where are actually the names we provided here, A, B, and F. So this is a way of quickly subsetting the data, uh, either by like genes of interest or samples of interest. Um, and we didn't have to go and deal with like making sure that, you know, whatever subs uh, subset operation we did in this small table, actually we updated the, the, our middle table with the same information and make sure that we didn't mess up the ordering or anything like that. Uh, when we did the subsetting by rows, we also didn't have to, for genes, we didn't actually have to like make sure that the counts was also subset to the same genes in the same order all of that. And so that's like the beauty of summarized experiment that uh, it, you know, it uh, combines all the data together and lets you use it. Next, I'm just gonna show you um, uh, two, a couple packages that build upon summarized experiment. I'm, I'm gonna probably need like maybe three more minutes or so. No, I had a fatal error. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, let's go outside of our studio then. Um, uh, okay. um, this, I need a, I'm going to tell uh, John Myers that I need a computer with more RAM now. <laughs> so, okay. So let's see. We're gonna make summarize experiment object again. Yep. Oh well. Too much for my computer. Okay. Um, load in the package, generate the data. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I have my example data. And so what I wanted to show you is this um, IC package, which is the name of it is Interactive Summarized Experiment Explorer. Um, and so this is a really nice package because we provide a lot of data in the summarized experiment uh, format. And um, this great team made um, a shiny app called IC that allows you to explore your own data interactively. And it takes a little bit of time to load, but, um, even without Zoom and all of this. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty fun to work with. Um, so right now it's like loading all the data. Um, and here we can see actually, we can explore, let's say our uh, 200 genes. We can make plots of the expression for like even gene in different ways. Um, see like some information about the, the genes themselves or like some of the columns that we might have in our summarized experiment object. So this is pretty cool. Um, and it's like fairly simple to load to run it's just one function. You just need enough uh, computer power to do this. Um, 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 so that's pretty cool. Another one is one I made called recount. Um, the recount is a package for um, where you can access data for 70,000 human RNA-seq samples uh, that are um, uh, organized across 2040 um, projects and studies that people did. Uh, and so this one in particular, I'm downloading a file um, from the web and I'm loading it. And you can see here, this, this is the summarized experiment object that I loaded. It has 58,000 genes across 12 samples. This, I mean, I chose this one in particular because it's a small example. 
and it has 21 specific columns, has some information about the genes themselves. So like row ranges, RSC gene. Uh, here we can see a little bit of it. It has like a symbol and some other information for those genes. Um, then, um, um, so that's this IC and recount entries that I have here. The next one is the EQTL uh, uh, browser from Lever. These are projects um, uh, with Andrew. Um, I'm gonna try to finish this, Joanna, and then I'll go to your question. Um, and so the EQTL browser here has uh, like um, uh, two phases, phase one and phase two. If you go to the phase two browser, um, uh, there's a link at the bottom for data availability. And through it, we actually uh, provide this uh, process data at the gene exon junction and transcript levels. This gene one is the URL that I'm actually using here to download. This is a file that is 290 megabytes uh, big, and so it takes a little bit to download, um, especially when broadcasting on Zoom. But, um, um, so I'm downloading this file um, to my computer, and then I'm gonna load that file. Um, um, uh, in R. Um, if I didn't mess up anything. Uh, and then we'll have the data for the brain seek phase two experiment um, across 900 samples. Um, um, oh, okay. There it is. Uh, um, and so here, this is one also across 58,000 genes. It's actually the, same, the exact same genes as the uh, recon. That's uh, a little bit by design, I think. <laughs> um, uh, and then 900 samples. Here we actually have two count matrices. We have the counts and the RPKMs. And like the information, uh, we try to make it a bit more friendly for users. Um, so it has more information about the genes, like the gene code, the symbol, um, symbol ID, uh, and a bunch of other things here. Um, so you can see how uh, like uh, we use it quite a bit um, to power many of our analysis. Um, okay, Joanna, you had a question? Yes. When I load RC gene description, I see object with null pointer. What does that mean? Uh, length zero, size zero, object with null pointer. But then I, I, I do have stuff. this one. Uh, no, yes, uh, no. After that, mm. RSC gene. Um, okay, wait a second. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Uh, we'll need to have a. Um, I can um... We'll need to have a little like a uh, small reproducible example to go through it. Cool. So I'm gonna stop. Um, I mean, that was it for today. I'm gonna stop recording in case you have more questions or uh, questions you don't wanna ask through the recording. Mm -hmm.